So I've been sent this antenna by uh, one of my subscribers. He purchased this, didn't think a great deal of it, and uh, asked me if I wanted to take a look at it. And of course, yes, I uh, would be very interested in taking a look at this antenna because it is a popular one on eBay. Um, a whole host of uh, sellers on eBay do sell this antenna. And it works from uh, 791 megahertz all the way up to uh, 2.6 gigahertz there so it's got quite a wide range uh, the VSWR of this 2.5 is a little bit high but also is the gain the gain is uh, 35 dBi if uh, you are to believe that polarization is vertical uh, it's an omnidirectional antenna the rest of it's just uh, blah 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 but um, also uh, when I uh, did a little bit of looking just to see how popular on eBay this antenna is. Quite a few uh, sellers also market this as a uh, Wi-Fi antenna, believe it or not. Even though uh, it doesn't mention anything about Wi-Fi on here, uh, sellers are selling the exact same antenna and claiming it's for Wi-Fi as well. So let's take it out of the box then. And uh, you can see here we've got uh, some coax does look a little bit uh, different from the uh, coax that we uh, looked at on the uh, previous antenna. Um, maybe it's a little bit better, better I don't know, but we'll uh, take a look at that. But um, you get quite a long length, and of course you've got the two SMA connectors here uh, going into the uh, one antenna, which is never a good idea. You really want to purchase two antennas as I've said before and uh, experiment with the distances but uh, we've got this suction cup on here it does rattle around a little bit in there um, this has got threads on it so uh, it's got another thread on uh, the edge here so we can thread it into the bottom so you uh, orientate it that way so it's like a diamond shape but um, before we take a look at the inside of this let's uh, take it over to the network analyzer just to see how well it does perform if it's as broadband as uh, the claims are because so far with some of these that I've picked up off eBay you don't really get to see the claimed frequencies that are on the side of the box it's uh, you know pretty disappointing when you hook it up to a network analyzer so let's take it over there and take a look at it so here's the uh, test setup then on the bench exactly how uh, you've seen me do this before I can only connect uh, one SMA connector up at a time so let's have a look at the uh, network analyzer so we can see the output so here it is on the uh, network analyzer then and I'm scanning from uh, 10 megahertz here all the way up to uh, 3.8 gigahertz here so we've got uh, some nice responses there along this uh, spectrum here um, remember this uh, claims to work at quite a number of different frequencies but uh, let's start off at the bottom and here we've got uh, around 900 megahertz 9.4 megahertz it's probably going to be good for all the way down there to uh, 1 gigahertz going back up again it's probably good up to uh, 1.2 gigahertz there so all the way from let's say 985 around that mark there all the way up to 1.2 gigahertz our next frequency response is all the way over here and we're looking good about 1.8 gigahertz uh, there going down to 2 gigahertz going back up it's probably good to about 2.2 uh, gigahertz so a nice wide frequency response there 1800 megahertz 2.2 gigahertz that's very nice now this also claims to be a, a Wi-Fi antenna we can come up here with the cursor we can see 2.45 there which is about bang in the middle of the Wi-Fi spectrum pretty poor it's not going to work as a uh, Wi-Fi antenna so let's carry on going come down to about 2.8 gigahertz we're getting another response here so it's probably going to work well at 2.8 gigahertz all the way down there 
to about 3.2 gigahertz now it doesn't claim to go up that high but uh, as you can see on the network analyzer it certainly does so probably looking at about 3.3 uh, gigahertz to around 3.1 gigahertz is going to work well but certainly as we can see with a lot of these antennas that I'm getting in now for the uh, 3G 4G LTE they all seem to work best in this area here they make uh, quite a few bold claims but uh, they all seem to work best around the uh, 1800 megahertz to uh, 2.1 2.2 gigahertz and this one also is working best in that area but we are getting some nice uh, responses in uh, the other parts of the spectrum so yeah you, you can uh, say it's quite a uh, wide uh, band of frequency of your operation it'll be interesting to see what's on the inside of this antenna but again it works best in this uh, kind of sweet spot area here around 1800 megahertz to around 2 gigahertz so as we saw on the network analyzer then it's uh, got a better response across the board than uh, many of the other ones uh, the retail ones that we've taken a look at so far doesn't quite match up with the specs on the box but still we've got some nice responses there and uh, yeah i'm looking at how to get into this it looks like it's plastic welded shut so it's going to need a little bit of force now i did manage to get into this it was just uh, held together with clips so you know we could potentially use this case for a uh, another build in the future but uh, it's really really simple inside here we've just got two pcb boards and it's really hard to see probably hard to see on camera because of this uh, black solder mask you can see the uh, main driven element here it's shaped like a spoon or a uh, paddle it's quite wide elliptical in this area here and then we've got uh, a simple strip line feeding into that and on the opposite side of the PCB, as we can see on this one here, we have a square ground plane. Now we have seen this kind of uh, shape previously on this channel. There's a, a Cisco omnidirectional uh, antenna that uh, I've uh, taken a look at uh, a few years ago now. I'll put the uh, name of the antenna up on the screen. I can't remember it off the top of my head but uh, that also uh, used this uh, kind of shape here to uh, increase its gain slightly and uh, its overall operational frequency and that's something that they've done here to uh, probably uh, increase the operational frequency of this antenna over a wider area by having this spoon uh, elliptical shape on this being fed in because uh, by the looks of this it's just a simple uh, monopole design um, I don't think it's a Hertzian dipole which the Cisco antenna was because there's no copper in this area here uh, if you had uh, copper here and uh, on this side here sandwiched in between this main transmission line here then you would effectively have a uh, Hertzian dipole but uh, I think more what's going on here is uh, a cross between a uh, patch antenna and an omnidirectional antenna because the uh, ground plane is only covering this small amount here this is free to uh, radiate omnidirectional from the top here and uh, this wider elliptical shape allows that to uh, operate over a, a wider area on the uh, spectrum so yeah very interesting but very very simple and i can say almost uh, with full confidence that this is not 32 db of uh, gain nowhere near that you're probably looking at maximum um and i'm being generous uh, possibly uh, 7 to 8 db and yeah i'm being uh, generous with that as we can see this uh, antenna is held together with a lot of the uh, hot snot but uh, we can see enough to see that uh, we're using this really crappy speaker wire coax again it's uh, nothing special um, not much better than speaker wire and in a previous video recently I've shown extremely lossy um, you know a small length 
like this it's not quite as uh, long as the one we saw in that previous video but you're still going to lose a lot of your uh, energy through this coax just uh, leaking away there and being of no use so yeah um, not the best antenna probably uh, not as good as the uh, built-in antennas that you might find uh, inside your uh, 3g 4g router to be quite honest with you yeah they look a little bit bigger but uh, that's just to get it to work over that uh, longer uh, frequency uh, range it's it's not bigger because it's more powerful now I've managed to find uh, the Cisco antenna that I was talking about you can see we've got this uh, elliptical uh, piece here on the main drain element of this antenna and uh, this is a lot more sophisticated because we've got a uh, loading coil here we've got uh, side lobes here uh, that all adds uh, inductance and uh, capacitance to the antenna and also tunes it in a little bit more so you've got a much better VSWR and uh, I haven't measured the VSWR on this but it is really really high and that's probably because it's such a uh, basic design I don't think uh, because there's no copper on this side that this is uh, a Hertzian dipole like this one is but uh, it's certainly got the ground plane here and then uh, this main driven element here but uh, yeah it's nowhere near the uh, claimed gain that they uh, put on the side of the box really really basic antenna and it will have a very very high VSWR because it's such a uh, poor design and uh, when you compare it to a much more sophisticated design utilizing the same uh, method that we've got here you can just see the difference between the two now I was just going to uh, end the video there and just a uh, quick look at a uh, cheap uh, 4G LTE antenna off of uh, eBay just to see what you uh, actually get with one of these but um, you can learn so much from taking apart other antennas I mean this uh, antenna here just has so much uh, RF design going on in that it's not just as simple as it looks but uh, I know from experience and uh, you know taking apart other antennas and things I've learned over the years just adding some copper tape like I have done with this one here and uh, it's uh, completely isolated from the main driven element it uh, travels up this transmission line here and then to the uh, rest of the antenna this uh, ground plane then goes back here and it's grounded to the original ground plane on the back it comes up to the same height as the original ground plane I know that just by adding that to this antenna is going to completely change the uh, characteristics of this antenna so it will not be recognizable to uh, how it was so I thought it'd be interesting uh, to hook up both of these this one's uh, completely unchanged I've just hooked it up with some decent coax here SMA connector just like I have with this one probably going to see a little bit of a change because it's no longer inside the uh, plastic box I mean uh, this will have a slight effect on it but uh, I'm hoping you know because uh, I've done just a simple change like this you're going to see that these two antennas now are just completely different from each other so here's the uh, unmodified antenna on the test setup then and as I say it will look a little bit different to the first test we did uh, because it's no longer inside the case now and it hasn't got that second PCB in such close proximity but let's have a look on the network analyzer so here we are then and uh, this is the unmodified one remember because it's no longer in the case and it, it's uh, not in diagonal with uh, the other antenna it will show uh, some slightly different characteristics but we've still got this big dip here uh, around 1.8 gigahertz uh, to 2.2 gigahertz we've got dips going on here as well 1.4 1.3 and then over here at uh, 8.65 which is uh, the frequency that uh, it originally said on the box that it worked at we didn't uh, see such a pronounced dip there at that lower frequency before but this time we are so you can see now uh, that's at 1 gigahertz and it'll drop down uh, 1.4 but again we've still got this uh, really nice dip that we see with a lot of these cheap ones off eBay 
working really well about 1.8 to uh, 2.2 gigahertz so let me hook up the one that I've uh, slightly modified I mean I haven't uh, done too much to it just added that extra ground plane so we can see the difference between the two just by adding that ground plane and what I'm going to say is it will completely change the characteristics of that antenna now this is the second one that we've got hooked up and uh, I can already see from over here we're seeing a completely different uh, output on the network analyzer display so let's take a look at that and see what our modification has actually done so this is the second one on the screen and we can see it's completely different now we've got no response whatsoever in those uh, sub 1 gigahertz uh, frequencies but uh, look at this response in the middle we're getting uh, from around uh, 1.4 megahertz all the way up along here all the way to 2.3 gigahertz a really wide frequency of response and basically what we've done we've taken that little monopole antenna we've changed the characteristics by adding that ground plane so that big long piece is no longer uh, part of the antenna it's a transmission line and we're just using the big wide um, bat shaped part of that antenna to uh, produce the uh, radiation and look what it's doing it's really really wide it's in this middle area here and uh, it's completely different from the original one just by adding that extra ground plane so fairly interesting there on the network analyzer just by adding this uh, bit of a ground plane here so quickly i just wanted to explain what uh, i think may be going off uh, with this antenna then so I think the overall length, if we look at this one here that's not modified, it's uh, a little bit difficult to see with this solder mask I know, but uh, basically we've got the entire length of the antenna here. Now I think the entire length of the antenna is where we're seeing the frequency response of the uh, sub gigahertz and just above uh, one gigahertz. Um, the frequency response that we're seeing around uh, 1800 to uh, 2 gigahertz to 2.1 gigahertz I think that uh, this is responsible for that and the overall shape of this so this is responsible for the uh, lower frequencies this is responsible for the higher frequencies because what we're doing when we put uh, a ground plane on here like so what we're effectively doing is shortening this antenna so this part here can no longer radiate as an antenna would what we've done is we've turned this effectively into a transmission line so this up here is a transmission line just like a piece of coax because it's uh, uh, both sides of it is uh, flanked by uh, these two ground planes here and then this part here is the only part of the antenna that is working when we've got these two ground planes in place and that's why we're still getting a really good response uh, higher up the band uh, you know around the uh, 1.6 gigahertz to 1.8 gigahertz there but uh, the response um, lower uh, 1 gigahertz and below has completely disappeared and that's because we have effectively cut the antenna off shortened it so it's no longer responsive at those lower frequencies at least I think um, going on my knowledge and experience um, that that is effectively what we've done and I'm a very practical person I learn a lot by experimenting and uh, building I also do a hell of a lot of reading as well but uh, it's little things like this that help you to try and understand how an antenna fundamentally works so to conclude then, I think uh, what we've learnt so far by looking at these uh, cheap ones on eBay is if you really want to get a good signal at a specific frequency for uh, 3G, 4G, LTE is build an antenna for that frequency. These um, antennas that work over a long range, much like the dual band antennas for Wi-Fi, they work and they're mediocre they're never going to break any records and I think that's what we're seeing with these as well um, when you increase bandwidth of the antenna make it work over um, you know a longer um, 
piece of the spectrum you're always going to sacrifice gain that's just one of the things of physics you don't get anything for nothing and i think moving forward if you want to build some antennas for these frequencies we're better off sticking to building one for a specific frequency so if uh, 1800 megahertz up to uh, 2 gigahertz is uh, what's most prominent in the area where you live build one for that frequency if uh, sub 1 gigahertz is more prominent in where you live build an antenna just for that frequency and uh, you'll get much better signal that way and uh, you know a much better performing antenna but i have got a, a couple of professional antennas that somebody sent me from germany uh, these have been taken down from um, a gsm uh, network a mobile phone network for us to take a look at and they should be very interesting to take a look at but uh, even this antenna turned out to be uh, pretty mediocre but um, you know with a little bit of experimentation uh, just understanding how something like this works can be really really interesting so hopefully the video didn't go on too long and uh, you've uh, learnt something and enjoyed this video if you did please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and if you'd like to support this channel please please feel free to pop over to patreon and hopefully you'll join me on the next one